Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you an image quality breakdown from the new Samyang AF 45mm f1.8. This is a lens that is designed solely for Sony FE. If you want more details about the build, the design, the construction, things like that, I recommend that you take a look at this first look episode here, where I break down all of those things and show you some photos from it. Today, however, we're going to break that image quality down in more detail. And so we're going to jump in right now and take a look at things like resolution and chromatic aberration control, bokeh, rendering, all of those things. Let's jump in, let's take a look. So let's take a look at uh, our basic vignette and distortion here. And so we can see that there is a little bit of a barrel distortion. You can see a slight curve here. It's not all that pronounced. And fortunately, it's also very linear. You don't see any kind of mustache type pattern. And so uh, just to take a quick look at correcting the vignette, which again, surprisingly for a lens with such a small uh, front element, it's only a 49 millimeter filter size, you know, vignette is really not too terrible at f1.8. As we can see here on the right side, I've done a little work of correcting. There is no profile here. So what I've actually done, here's the original, here is the correction. And so you can see I've just done a little bit of distortion correction for barrel distortion. Um, and then I have added about a stop of a light point plus 21 and then move the midpoint. It does extend a fair bit into the frame and end result is pretty clean. So I'm going to give it a completely unfair test here against the very expensive uh, Sony Zeiss 50 millimeter f1.4 and so at f1.8 and so that gives multiple advantages to the uh, much more expensive lens but um, it's what we have on hand and so taking the look here in the middle of the frame we can see that Samyang looks quite good in the middle though not at the same levels of contrast and resolution as what the very highly resolving uh, Sony Zeiss lens does. You can see just in some of these transition areas here there's a little less contrast. Let's look down at mid frame. We can see even out at mid frame um, resolution actually still looks quite good on the Samyang though not at the level of the Zeiss. Moving into the corner of the frame, uh, we can see there's a little bit more distortion on the Samyang and the um, resolution of the Sony Zeiss lens is a little bit better in the corners. Um, shows up particularly up in this corner. But again, we've got a fairly strong result even at f1.8. Very sharp in the center, sharp out at a good portion of the frame and you know some drop off in the corner but not extreme. So we can see a mild stop down to f2 actually does a a fair bit of cleaning up of vignette and so if that's a concern for you um, you know stopping down just a little bit does most of the heavy lifting for cleaning up the vignette. Uh, we can see also that there is a little bit more contrast at one third stop down um, at mid frame. Uh, it's, you know it's a little bit obviously less vignette and it's a little bit better contrast in that area looking over towards the corner. You can see corners actually look a fair bit better and some of that is just vignette lift, but you know, now not a bad result at all in the corner. If we can compare the F2 to the F2.8, we see that now a lot of vignette is lifted. It's nice and bright in the corner and resolution looks pretty good here. Looking at the mid frame, um, looks really nice and crisp down there. Looking just back at the center for a second, you can see now our resolution looks really nice and high here. So if we go back to our you know, expensive comparison here to the Sony Zeiss, uh, first of all, just take a quick peek here at the fact that you can see that 45 millimeters does frame a fair bit wider uh, than what does the Sony uh, Zeiss 50 millimeter. Looking at the center of the frame, I mean at f2.8, the Zeiss is like perfect. But we can see that Samyang is really not far behind. It looks nice and crisp, uh, really good contrast center of the frame, um, or I should say midpoint of the frame. It looks good, although it's it's out, definitely outclassed by the Zeiss here. And looking off in the corner, the same is true. It looks good, um, you know, not that good though. Finally, let's take a look at what happens if we stop it down a bit further to f5.6. So in the center of the frame, now resolution looks and contrast looks really fantastic. It's starting to look a little bit more like that Zeiss now in the center of the frame. Uh, moving down here to midpoint, same is true, really, really great sharpness and contrast out to the very edge of the frame. And down into the corners, uh, corner performance, there is improvement. It's maybe not as significant in the extreme corners. Extreme corners look good, but not exceptional. But uh, really, I mean, across a lot of the frame, I mean, right in this zone, you know, which is pretty low down, it's looking really, really crisp. 
So if we take things out to infinity, this is a very, very demanding situation for a lens like this, you know, a prime shooting at a wide maximum aperture in really, really harsh lighting conditions, extremely bright. What we can see is that it holds up quite well in terms of while it's the textures are not really super finely rendered here, it's, it's not bad, but not exceptional. Uh, it's held up well in terms of the uh, contrast uh, holds up well. Looking off here towards the corners, I'm not seeing evidence of a lot of like lateral chromatic aberration that impacts the image. Over on the right side, looking at f2.8, we can see there's definitely you know a increase of contrast. You can see that uh, there's a little bit of haze that clears up from the textures. And so at f2.8, we've got a lot of resolution and this is at 42 megapixels on a Sony a7R 3 And so we can see that it's doing a good job of resolving those fine textures out in infinity. Now, if we go on to f5.6, what we can see is that micro contrast at now, uh, you know, a true kind of landscape aperture at f5.6 has really bumped up and now uh, micro contrast looks really great. Um, you can see lots of distinction. It's a little muddier here, but at f5.6, the brights look a little bright. The uh, darks look nice and inky and uh, that's true right off here to the edge of the frame. And so a good result at landscape apertures at um, landscape distances. I'm also a fan of the lens um, in the way that it handles color. I think that it really has quite a beautiful rendering and we'll kind of transition to looking at that. But just looking once again at a real world, this is a handheld scene. You can see obviously depth of field is different here, but you know, off here at the edges, this is f5.6. We can see there's lots of resolution across the frame. Um, you know, up in this corner, we're losing some depth of field and so not quite the same. But we can see that, you know, throughout the image, really good resolution, but overall, the, just the general rendering of the image itself and the colors are really, really nice. Now this is at f2 and it shows again how it can handle uh, an infinity situation. And, and so here we can see looking through the little window, um, the foreground, everything is handled nicely. No really distracting kind of chromatic aberrations, but we can see looking, to, you know, this is in this is basically center of the frame, sweet spot, but it looks fantastic at F2. Really, really beautiful, um, you know, acute rendering of the fine details here of everything. So I'm really quite pleased with that result. And, you know, it produces a credible image in that kind of fairly demanding situation. Now this is wide open f1.8 and so uh, again looking at real world resolution in real world objects we can see around the eye here um, and so you know the pet iaf has worked well and look at that beautiful beautiful rendering of all the little fine details and so it doesn't fall apart there either i mean you can definitely see all of those eyelashes really finely rendered which you know for a, a tiny optic like this i'm pretty impressed with that amount of resolution Again, here, this is an image that shows uh, starting to look at some of the bokeh, but also, um, you know, chromatic aberrations, resolution. So we can see we've got lots of nice detail in the skin tones here and on the Chinese checkers board. You can see that there's a little bit of uh, green around bokeh circles. So you can just see a little bit of that fringing, you can see a little bit of it here, but you know, it, it's, it's not strongly pronounced. Uh, looking at the image globally, it's not destructive at all. And there is some trade-off, positive trade-offs that come with not perfectly correcting aberrations as we're going to see. Now this is stopped down to F4 and uh, using the Rotolite Neo 2 to uh, strobe this. But again, I wanted to just take a look at rendering fine details stop down a bit. And you can see that we've got really nice, actually micro contrast on this image, uh, just tons of detail in the uh, various fur uh, delineation of all of those, you know, just fine little details. And so again, uh, pretty impressive. Here's another real world landscape. And this is basically just right out of camera. I managed to catch just really nice light in this particular situation. And, uh, and so what we can see is that on really bright transition areas, and it shows up a little bit more on wider apertures, you will see a little bit of fringing sometimes on these really high transition areas. Again, not enough to be distracting and not all that hard to fix, but I did want to point that out. Um, you know, but I, I really feel like color rendition is quite beautiful out of the lens. And so I really liked it there. Also here, um, you know, again, kind of going from the macro distance to, you know, micro, you can see that, you know, it's again, the color is really nice and rich, deeply saturated, good contrast. 
And so again, I, you know, impressive results from this little, little tiny lens. So let's break down the bokeh a little bit more from the lens. And so I'm gonna give you a look in this image at maybe some of the good and the bad. So first of all, this is f1.8 wide open. So we can see, you know, good detail, good contrast here. In these, um, the transition here towards bright, you can see a tiny bit of chromatic aberration there, a little bit of purple fringing on that. Not enough again to be distracting at all. You can see also, as we've previously noted, a little bit of green fringing um, there on bokeh circles. You can also see if you look in at the circle itself that there is a little bit of, you know, a concentric circles, what you would call onion bokeh. Again, not strongly pronounced and so not too destructive. Also in the column, you know, that is a negative, you definitely have some geometric deformation um, towards, so kind of cat eye or lemon effect towards the edge of the frame. But here's the other thing that I, I find really, really positive. As, as we look at these transition areas moving out towards complete defocus, I, I really like the way that it handles moving into this area here. It's just very, very creamy, surprisingly creamy for a lens with a focal length like this and you know not a huge maximum aperture. And, and so I think look rendered as a whole, um, there's, there's character there. So either, either you'll love it or you, you won't. But um, I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the output. Here again, in this situation, we've got a little bit more of that kind of creaminess, but I'm, I'm actually surprised at how good this area looks from a lens like this. I just feel like there is a, there's a quality there that's nice and soft. And Samyang, one area of, of strength for them often is their bokeh rendering. It's something that they, they seem to do quite well. Here, another image here, like this is, this to me is really beautiful. It's not just the, the softness of it, it's the way that the color is handled and the defocus, which I find to be really attractive and it draws my eye in a positive kind of way. Also at f1.8 here, and you know this to me is, uh, this is this is good stuff right here. So I mean, first of all, take a look here. I mean, beautiful detail in that. So you know, a nice nice contrast even at f1.8. But then as we look towards the defocused area, just beautiful color, really really nice and soft and pleasing. So you've got some of this deformation, and sure, I love I love you know perfectly circular shapes across the frame, just like anyone else. But there is something about that that does add character at times too. Now, in this case, if you're you know really kind of focused on having circular shapes, this is actually at f4, and so because I had a little space to the background, I shot it there. So huge amounts of detail on the the subject, and because I'm close, pretty close to minimum focus, not quite, but you know pretty close. The depth of field is still quite small. But as we look at the bokeh circles here. Um, you know, nice and circular across the frame. And so we can see that the aperture does a pretty good job of keeping a circular shape when stopped down. Another real world shot here, um, F1.8. And so, you know, um, it's handled all this stuff. Like there's a little bit in this area, you can see just a little bit of the effect of chromatic aberration. Not that you can see the aberration so much, but a little bit of the haze result of it. But most of it here is nice and crisp. And again, even though it's it's not as, I'm my distance from myself to the subject is a little bit further, so the background is less defocused. But at the same time, the quality of the background is good. It's not busy, it's not um, off-putting in any way. Now this represents minimum focus. The maximum magnification is is not very impressive on this lens. It's 0.12 times. And so that's on the, the low end of the scale of what might be expected for a 50 millimeter lens. It's nothing like the Tamron 45 millimeter F1.8 that could produce uh, more than double that 0.29 times. And so it doesn't share that strength of the Tamron lens, even though in some ways it shares some of the character uh, not all the negatives, however. Um, and so you can see that close-up image quality is pretty good. Um, not The contrast doesn't blow me away here, but it's, it's doing a pretty good job with the fine details. Now in this image, we're looking at a couple of things. You, you, know, you can take a look a little bit more at the bokeh and you can take a look at chromatic aberrations, look at our subject real quick, you know, and it's rendered nicely. But we're all starting to look at flare resistance. The included lens hood is really tiny for this lens. And so, you know, that might give one pause, but the good news is, is that a flare resistance is not really a problem. The sun is right here in this image and you can see that contrast is has held up. We can see the, the sky beyond. 
and uh, then stop down to f11. You can see again the sun there. You've got a little bit of a ghosting effect here. Contrast has not been lost, however, through the image. Again, in this image, the sun is actually right here out of the frame, uh, backlighting the subject really strongly. It's an evening shot, and so I'm using um, lighting from the Godox 8200 Pro to uh, defeat that. Even with sunglasses on, IAF worked fine, and so we can see from the subject really crisp detail, and um, you know it works nicely as a portrait lens. So we'll take a look at a few more portraits here. Kind of same situation here. We can see that it's done a good job just getting it on the face. Uh, lots of detail there. IAF has worked well here. Here at a longer distance, I'm probably a good 40 feet away from the subject. And let's take a quick peek here. Uh, this is wide open, f1.8. And so we can see that um, even at this distance, again, good detail on the subject. Uh, I mean, there's nothing to complain about there. You know, it's not a long enough focal length to really completely blur out the background um, because of the distance to the subject. But we can see that even though this is what I would call transition zone, it, it's not gorgeous. Um, but at the same time, there's nothing that's um, really bad about it. It's not a lot of hard edges. And so the resulting image, you know, does have that a little bit of that three-dimensional cutout look that, you know, a portrait photographer might want. Here we're at f2.8, and so I've got the light, a Rotolite Neo 2 um, inside the magazine just to give a kind of unique effect. We can see that detail on the face is really nice. I've gone for a little bit of a warmer look with the lighting itself, um, to, you know, to create a, a particular look, and I like the end result here. Uh, likewise here, same kind of lighting, although moving outdoors. This is f3.2. Good detail in the skin tones, um, you know, and it's intentionally a little bit warmer because of the kind of light I'm trying to create. Here we've gone for a little bit more just neutral kind of lighting here in terms of the color temperature, and so you can see skin tones look really nice. This is at f2, and so our background um, is nicely defocused, pretty portrait, and here another also at f2. And, and so we can see, um, you know, detail looks good. IEF is doing its job. And uh, so, you know, a, a pretty flexible optical instrument. So as you can see, there's a lot here that I personally really like. Um, you know, there are lenses that are radically sharp across every section of the frame. And if that's a priority, getting that, you know, kind of perfect resolution, then uh, I think that this lens does actually pretty well in that metric, but there are sharper lenses, you know, and a corner to corner type resolution. However, if you are someone who prioritizes a nice balance between sharpness and then overall rendering, I think that this lens to me has that kind of special undefinable it quality where there's just something about the images that really uh, brings joy to you that that you really enjoy looking at and that's the way that I feel about this lens it actually has surprised me in that metric because um, you know because it's such a, a little compact lens and it's you know not all that expensive relatively I didn't go into it with necessarily the bar set super high in terms of what I expected in from the image quality and so in many ways it is as ex exceeded my expectations I, I knew as I told you in the first look episode that I love the 45 millimeter focal length I find it just really useful for a lot of things but I found that I also really like the the images from the lens itself if there is anything that I would consider a, a, a negative for me I wish that it could focus a little bit closer and that it had a better maximum magnification. Um, that's something that I really valued with the, the Tamron 45 millimeter f1.8. However, I mean, when you consider how tiny this lens is and all the things that it does well, I'm not left with a whole lot to complain about. Now, in a final episode coming up, we will take a look at, uh, in more detail, at the focus quality, autofocus performance. We'll also take a little bit more look at, at video performance for things like that, and kind of sum up everything that we've looked at and show you some more images as a part of that final verdict. In the meantime, however, if you look in the description down below, you can take a look at the image gallery that I've been adding to. I've got a lot of variety of images, and as I said in the first look episode, it's easy to get a lot of images when you have a compact lens that is so easy to bring along and so that is a huge you know check in favor of this particular lens but stay tuned for that episode you can look at those images there's also buying links there if you'd like to purchase one for yourself and of course there's linkage there to follow me on social media and uh, sign up for my newsletter become a patron and get advanced screenings of upcoming content and of course if you haven't already please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube thanks for watching have a great day